What's up guys, girls, welcome back. Once again, thanks for everything. Thanks for the likes and subscribes, the views. You guys are doing awesome. So a few months ago, we bought dad a, uh, a crossbow for his birthday, the Barnett Whitetail Hunter 2. You guys really seem to enjoy that video, so we're gonna do a 60 day review on it and basically just go over you know, what, what our thoughts and process of getting this thing set up and shot in are. So stay tuned. to talk about this Barnett Whitetail Hunter 2. I've actually had it out in the woods and it's really light to carry. I made a sling for it instead of buying one. I kind of was a little on the creative side, but it just like a regular rifle sling. You put it on, you got a clip on the top, and you got a little post on the bottom. I had to, actually this one was a little tight in the molding, so I had to take a drill and you know to get it to go, but nothing really major. The shooting end of it, I probably, you know, ran 30 bolts. And what I would do, according to, just read your manual in there, it'll tell you after you shoot it, you want to wax the string, you want to go back and check everything, and that's what I did. And you've got, uh, you've got an anchoring bolt here that actually holds the limbs in place. That's a single point. I shot probably five, six shots out of it, had to retighten it. All the little Allen screws that go in there, the hand guards, you want to go back through and, and tighten those down. Eventually. Uh, what will happen is you'll get them tight and they'll stay tight. Uh, these are all nice and tight and like I say I probably 30, 30 shots or so. We're probably at about 50 now. The thing I found with the scope was actually go by the instruction manual. You've got like a 25. I shot it in at 25, 30, 40, and 50 and then I could go in between the crosshairs and, and bracket it. So you can get, and, and it is, uh, you'll get two bolts with it and they'll come with field points. This thing weighs out like 304 grain. grain. Um, you know, you get it shot in, uh, but then when you jump up to your broadhead, I actually have a different set of bolts here. These are Easton Bloodline. And I've got uh, 100 grain muzzies. Those are the trocars? They are the trocars. They're 100 grain. And actually, there is a, there's a little, make sure you use the little washer. There's a washer that goes on the back of that. That keeps those blades fixed. But they actually uh, have like a wee tiny little Allen screw that holds those in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've shot these probably <coughs> five or six times. And I had to make some adjustments. Uh, simply due to the fact that now I'm at 400, 400 grains for the bolt and the broadhead, uh, and they are wicked, and it'll bury it clean up to the fletching. Haven't tasted any blood yet. Uh, let's see, the fifth is our opening day. The fifth of October is our one, opening day we've for bow. Got a week till we go out. We got a week till we get ready to go out. Uh, I had it up in the tree. Make do yourself a favor. Get yourself a hanger, because you sitting in a a, a climber or stand, Any stand really? you know, it, it takes up some room. Uh, but once you get up there and get situated, I mean, it's it's nice. But if you look here on the back, just a feature that I found, there's a little Allen screw. You got one here and you got one here. My cheek wasn't falling in the right place. So I extended this out, which gave me a little little better eye relief on the, on the scope. Again, the clarity of the scope is, is super, super good. 
And for like I say, for the money you're spending, I'm anxious to get some blood on some arrows. For the for the price of this crossbow, you could buy five of the the Raven R10s. A very very well built crossbow uh, for being on the the lower market. The scope itself isn't a quarter MOA. You just kind of got to play with that to get it get it shot in until you figure out how many clicks equals out to an inch or a quarter inch. As far as it's well, left, like being the, quiet. The, the well, it, there there are a couple features uh, I want to do with it yet. I want to get the limb dampeners and put in here, and then I also have a string dampener. And if you look right along this edge right here, there's some screw holes in here, and they'll have a a string dampener that comes out, and actually this bumps up against it. And I think, you know, if I want to get them, but I can't find them anyplace local. Local. Might have to go online and get them through Amazon or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think Amazon's the only place we've been able to find them so far. Yeah, exactly. And the same for like the uh, limb savers. Yeah, I've looked as at as far as yeah. the bow, the bow string dampeners and the the limb dampeners. Yeah, go. this is a split limb. Uh, the ones that I found were for a, you know uh, a full limb. And of course they had, uh, I'd have to take it all apart. And most of our hunting is like within 33, 33 yards. Anything that I measured in the stand was 33 yards. That was my longest shot. Yeah, I think so uh, fast. It's not so as far as ducking the string, we'll see. Yeah, like, like I say, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, getting some blood on the arrows and putting one down on the ground. That's not too far off. We'll shoot some. Yep. And now I've got it sighted in for the broadhead, so I'm gonna have to, you know, uh, I shot a couple bolts at it. So with the 300 grain, it wants to push it a little right. So I'm gonna be aiming just to the to the left of it to try and get you on the bullseye. Yeah, you're always typically you're gonna have a difference between your broadheads and your field points. Oh yeah, especially in the flight. And uh, here's your elevation. Again, the adjustments when I was shooting this thing in, uh, anytime I made an adjustment on the elevation, it was really, really good. Uh, however, when I went to make, uh, let's say I needed to make a left and right change, uh, if I was going eight clicks, nine clicks, something like that, uh, it seemed to lag behind a little bit. It would be like, uh, you know, I would shoot four bolts and then it would catch up and then we were good, but it was, it 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 didn't the adjustments weren't as as quick as the up and downs were the up and downs were almost immediate the left and right didn't come until after you know i'd shot a couple bolts through it and then it had dialed itself in uh, again another nice feature this thing also if you don't get that bolt slid all the way back and it, it's not going to fire even if you have it off off a of safe it's Some Good that safety, bolt good safety features yep. on it so you've got your regular got your regular safety, safety. switch there we're see dead. it, it we're won't even let me take it off a of safe without a bolt being without a there. bolt in it so and that that comes from like a basically a pressure plate that's in there that mm -hmm. the arrow has to mm -hmm. rest on also another safety feature is those hand guards right there yep. above his hand definitely want to keep your hands below that that keeps you from getting your fingertips whacked off when exactly. that string rides forward on the exactly. rail exactly exactly and uh safety first it's all fun until the till you, till the blood starts <laughs> till the blood starts flood and that goes for anything uh, so. yeah when, <laughs> and when you're out in the when you're out in the woods uh I pray to god somebody's got a uh tourniquet a tourniquet <laughs> all right go ahead and take a few shots we'll see how this thing runs so this is after everything's been shot in um he's done his modifications to it like he said he put he made that strap there out of 550 cord. And uh, if you're interested in doing that, you can find some videos on yeah, the YouTube. Yeah, there's a couple couple young fellows on there. They're really knowledgeable, and you know, it's 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 it does take some time, but you know, yeah, I mean, I, if I can build it, I'd build it versus buying it. So there's a there's a ton of things that you can do to it as far as your silence goes. You can you can add the limb savers on there. You can add some string dampeners on to quiet it up uh, there are aftermarket scopes out there but this one like dad said is nice and crisp and clear and dials in pretty nice it's like a steady four power correct yeah. it is it's a four by 32 four four by 32 millimeter so and really when you're in the woods 
yeah. you get a really it, it's pretty daggone clear yeah. i mean i've looked at some four powers of you know old old timey four powers and this thing is crisp yeah. you'll get a little cloth you'll get all your allen wrenches you know put it in a little bag put it in your backpack uh like i say you're gonna shoot it you're gonna shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and as you're doing it you know wax the string wax the rail uh, tighten your bolts. Tighten down. your bolts up, yeah. and eventually it will. It'll get locked in. These are all, all things that are in the owner's manual. Yep. It says to tight, tighten yep. down the bolts after use to make sure that they they get to the point where they wear with the bow, basically. Yep. I, I decided I was going to do some offhand stuff just to make sure that I could actually be accurate with it. Nothing worse than a bad place shot, especially for the deer. So we want to make sure that we're ethical and quick. May death come quickly. I think it's the hunter gatherer in all of us. Just the having that, that respect for Yep, the, the respect for the hunter. animal. Because he's given his life and we're gonna enjoy him. Well, as you can see, it'll bury it clean up to the frickin' fletching, so uh, that's attributed to how sharp that daggone broadhead is. And you know what? I'm happy. I'm shooting offhand. If you put that thing on a rest, it's dead on. Alright guys, so that's our review of the Barnett Whitetail Hunter 2. As you can see, you know, Dad's done a good bit to get it to where it is. And he, you know, he's tuned it in to shoot fairly accurate for his his shooting style. For the price of this crossbow, it's a, a very versatile weapon. It'll shoot, we've had it out to what, 50 yards now and uh, it's, it's done pretty good for him. He made that strap for it and needs to get a few things to dampen it up some as far as sound reverberation and stuff like that. But, but as far as right out of the box, it's an excellent crossbow. Uh, accurate as can be. Takes a little bit of time to get that scope set up and figure out exactly what your MOA is on it, but that's really not a huge deal if you know what you're doing. So the, the crossbow, the broadheads, the bolts, everything will be linked in the description below if you guys are interested in buying them. Most likely some of you guys have watched the first video and you know you're kind of on the fence and in my recommendation and I'm sure dad recommends it as well we say go ahead and buy it you know if you got the money for it you can go out and buy you know the Raven R10s or 10 points and uh, center points and stuff like that but this is for the price 350 bucks out the door that's not too bad so if that's the price range you're looking to buy a crossbow in then the the Barnett line not just the the whitetail but the Barnett line crossbows are probably going to be the best Hopefully you guys enjoyed and got the information you needed to get out of it, and we will see you back here next week. Thanks. Bye.